Hey, good morning guys, it's Joel, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the shadow because I've put a little videos out on a couple topics, and that seems to be the one that I've been getting the most questions on. So I wanted to kind of go over that concept with you guys one more time um, and answer some of the questions that I seem to just continue to get, um, you know, over and over on repeat. But, um, so the first part is, just a quick review, the shadow is that idea from Jungian psychology that we kind of have this idea of who we are. We have like a, an archetype of the self. And this self-image of who I am at this moment is threatened by a lot of other things that I know are true about the world or about myself, but they're threatening to my idea of who I am. And because they're threatening to it, I've forced them down into the unconscious because I know them, but I can't know them. And so this could be something like, um, see, we have a self shadow, which is kind of the things we don't not want to know about ourselves, and we have a world shadow, which is the stuff we don't know, want to know about the world. Yet we do know that it's true. So this could be like something like, well, you know, I want to think of myself as a self-made man, but I know that I was given all of this handout that a lot of other people didn't get from my family or from my background and whatever, um, and so I see that in other people. So when other people do something that is bad or rude or um, arrogant, it's okay to get a little upset. But when there's areas where you find yourself getting disproportionately very much upset, that's sometimes where you're shadow projecting. Because you're looking at that other person and you're seeing the part of yourself that you don't want to own, but you know is there in them. You're kind of giving your worst parts up to other people because you don't want to hold that. So you're, you're giving it to them. So, for example, if the idea of myself is a self-made man, again, and I force into the unconscious this knowledge that I'm not really as self-made as I advocate for and like to talk about, then when somebody else starts to talk about how they came from nothing, yada, 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 you know, I become very much disproportionately angry at that arrogance. And you aren't self-made. You have these, these, these things. I can't believe they would do that. I have a shadow projection that isn't proportionate isn't a proportionate reaction to what they're discussing. So, um, you know, this kind of stuff comes up a lot. Um, that would be an example of like the self shadow. Now something about the world shadow might be like, well, I like to think that good things happen to good people and bad things happen to good people. If a bad thing happens to a bad, to a good person, there was a reason for it. I might not know what it is, but it's part of a plan or it's part of a, some kind of idea of justice that I'm projecting onto the world. I like to think that that exists because I need to believe in a world with that kind of justice in order to be safe. Or I need to believe in a certain kind of humanity with certain qualities in order to be safe. And so when I see that, that's my you know, self-image is this is me and I'm fine to live in a world like that. When I see evidence in the world that it doesn't really work that way, I force that into the unconscious and it becomes part of that world shadow. And it terrifies me disproportionately when I see those things because I'm either told this is true or I want to believe it's true. For some reason, I need that to be my view of the world, yet there's all this evidence that's refuting that. So an example of that would be somebody, um, one time I, uh, a long time ago, I had a um, trauma patient who was telling me she kept holding on, she would come to this realization in therapy and then it would go away and then it would come about in therapy and then it would go away. And I was doing EMDR, which is an eye movement therapy for trauma. And I was like, what can you not know here? You know, what is it that's too scary to know here? And she told me, you know, if I let myself know that somebody was capable of doing this to me, then I am never going to be able to be safe in relationships again. I'm never going to be able to be safe in the world again. So I can't accept that this is the world that I'm in. I force it down in the unconscious. So one of the things you do in Jungian treatment is that you are trying to bring that stuff into the conscious because we do live in this world. I don't want to live in it the way that it is a lot of ways. She didn't want to live in it the way that it was a lot of ways, but we still have to find a way to live in it the way that it is, not the way that we would like it to be. And we, we, the thing that resists that is that world shadow. This is our idea of ourselves. We don't think that we can live in a world like that. It's too scary. It's too big. And so a lot of my growth and personality development therapy is teaching people to let go of this idea of who we are right now, because we're supposed to be a different self, a bigger self later on in our life as we, as we age. This should be an ongoing process. There's nothing wrong with who I am right now. Well, there's a couple of things, but there's not anything majorly wrong with who I am right now. But in two years, I should be a bigger self. I should be a different self. And the idea is that we have to let go of who we are right now 
in order to build a bigger sense of self that can hold the shadow, that can hold all of this knowledge that we're afraid of about ourselves and about the world. And that requires us giving up our self-image, our self-identity. And so it's very scary. Our ego resists that. It's like, no, this is who you are. This is, you're a good Christian, or boys don't cry, or you're supposed to do this, and this is the way that you have to believe in your faith. This is the way that you have to live as a business person. This is the way that you have to live as an American, whatever. Um, and to let go of that feels like death, because we're letting go of part of our ego, and it's fighting us, because it's saying, this is who you are. So with trauma, you're going to be much more likely to want to hold on to who you are and not to expand and let go of that. Um, but it's important that we learn to let go of the parts of ourselves that are holding us back and to let those pieces die so that the rest of us can live. And this is kind of like weeding a garden. There's only so much self-energy. There's only so many nutrients, so much room. And we have to get rid of some of the weeds because it's not really what we're trying to grow, <clears throat> even though that's a lot of work. So a lot of times when there's a big part of yourself that you've disowned as a person, you know, we have different pieces of the self. We have different kind of voices in our head. You know, we come into life as a vulnerable child. And the vulnerable child can only cry and ask for attention. It's very much in touch with our vulnerability. So all that it's doing is saying, I need help, I'm hurting, and then getting help. So when we get to be about one and a half, two, we start to cover this self up um, or lose touch with it because we have to potty train. We can't say this is what I want right now. Our parents have to teach us you have to do something that you don't want in order to get a reward later. We have to withhold immediate gratification, which is, feels like we're hurting ourselves, right? We want that. So why can't I just pee on the floor or why can't I eat you know, gummy bears right now? Um, and we have to learn to do that. And that voice from that process becomes an inner critic. But, analyzes our lives it says you know everybody at the party laughed at your joke but really it was stupid or you know you really should do this 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 and this and this before you can eat a cupcake oh you still didn't deserve to eat that cupcake if you're over identified with the inner critic you can be a very a-type motivated business personality with a very internal locus of control but a lot of times that leads to burnout and it's not a very well-rounded way to live later in our life we have to go to grade school and we have to exist socially and this is scary. We have to kind of interact some part of who we are with some part of who other people are and have this kind of interpersonal relationship series. And we get that push yourself. And that push yourself is that energy that says, you know, go forward, just one more cupcake, one more email, one more Netflix episode, one more push up. It doesn't really care what one more beer, like it did a cigarette. It doesn't care what you're doing. It just wants you to keep doing something so that you don't stop down, stop and then drop down and feel the emotion that's underneath it. So if there's a big emotion underneath that push yourself that you're trying to get away from, the push yourself is going to be very turned up. I mean, I can go on and on, but as we get older, we have personalities that are more unique to us. They're not developmental stages that everybody has. They're personalities that we may have developed to solve a specific problem in college or in a previous marriage or when we became a mother, whatever it is. And a lot of times if you disown one of these personalities and it becomes your shadow because you're saying, no, the inner critic is bad, I'm going to be a hedonist, or no, the relaxing self, the hedonistic, self-interested self is bad. I'm going to disown it and just lean into chastity and service or whatever. Um, that inner, that self that you're disowning, if you're not in touch with that, if you don't really build a sense of self that's able to be in touch with all these parts, it will run your life kind of from the shadows. And you see this a whole lot because um, people will often marry a disowned part of themselves. It doesn't make the marriage bad. We all kind of do this. It's not an unhealthy thing to do but you need to be in touch with it, just like everything else. Um, so, for example, you may have someone who uh, is a big partier, like the, not a big partier like a drinker, but just somebody who's like, doesn't take themselves seriously, they're such a silly person, they're always a little bit too tipsy, they're always calling attention to themselves, they don't care, they're just silly, they don't put a lot of attention on, or pretension on what they do. And then they marry somebody who just really doesn't like attention at all. They kind of shrink away from it. And they really wish this person would stop doing that. And all of their fights are about this. Well, see, both of those people have married a disowned self, a disowned part of themselves. They realize that they're out of touch with the social self or the introspective, serious self. But they can't be conscious of that. And so they fight about it. When you can be conscious of this, you come to terms with it a little bit better. So this is a bunch of really big ideas. Um, a lot of times shadow will show up in your life as a dream, um, it, or the shadow will show up in a dream, and the way that it shows up is kind of the way that you react to it in real life. So if you've disowned your aggression, 
Um, I have a lot of people who will have dreams about finding like great beasts in their basement, a sleeping dragon, or they'll hear like a, a beating heart beneath their house or a deep breathing of like some kind of monster that's down there that they had no idea lived down there. Um, if, if you are going through a moment where you're realizing that you're going to embrace the shadow, you're going to have this moment of self expansion. Sometimes people will realize that, oh, there's this whole other room in my house and it just goes on and on and on. That's a very common dream. You're, they're discovering new parts of themselves or, oh my gosh, my garden. When I just clear this wall, there's this whole secret garden. And I thought that this was where my yard ended, but really myself is so much bigger than I knew that it was. And you'll get little hints about how you're going to embrace the shadow there. If the shadow is something that's shutting you down, a lot of times the way you react to it in a dream, if a monster comes or somebody attacks you or you lose control, there's no brakes while you're driving a car or something, the way you handle that in the dream is the way that you would have handled it in real life. So if you're walking and all of a sudden a monster comes and you run away, that's maybe what you're doing. If you yell at it, you know, go away, you will not take me, and then it slinks away, maybe that's how you're keeping that at bay in your life in some way. So, I mean, this is a lot of big ideas. I appreciate you guys sticking with me for 11 minutes. Wow. Um, but if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Um, this is an idea that has I've gotten a lot of feedback about. People have had a lot of questions, so I hope this answers some of yours. Um, I also keep getting the question if I take patients who are out of state. If you're in Alabama, I'm happy to see you as a patient. Um, I'm not allowed to practice out of state. Uh, so I do do consultations. Um, if you're a practitioner and you want to have a conversation with me about some of this stuff, or if you are a person, um, not a patient, but if you're a person on a journey and you want to talk about some of these concepts and kind of get a brief um, overlook of your life and what you'd like to work on, personality development, creativity consultations, I do those too for people who are not practitioners. So I'm, I'm happy to do that, but I can't see you long term as a patient and I can't take your insurance if you're outside of Alabama. Um, so please let me know. Um, I'm always happy to add some. I'm full right now, but I'm, I'm always happy to add something on the weekends or in the evening. Um, if you want to meet with me and hopefully this is something that's been helpful and has answered a question I would love to talk with any of you more in the comments if that's something that you would like to do and I uh, hope you all had a great day